Welcome everyone to this to today's Rock Hard for Life free class. Today's a really good one. It's going to be applicable to all guys. This is on the body mind connection, specifically the neuromuscular part, which will make sense here in a second. And it's the basic theme is strength versus control of the pelvic muscles to improve bedroom performance. Uh, which is applicable to all guys. So we're going to go in deep today on the, um, we've been talking about the body-mind connection and then um, diving into each little aspect of that. Well, today we're going to focus in on the neuromuscular part of that. So if you look here on the impact point matrix, this is the body-mind connection, what we've been focusing on over these last few classes. And um Basically, we've been diving deep into the center portion. Today, we did the heart and the gut. Today, we're going to do the neuromuscular uh, section of this. So this is really important, particularly when we're talking about strength of erections as well, particularly lasting power and learning you know, the importance of getting control of these muscles and how that whole system works, okay? Because uh, it's a really important part of this. Now, if you're looking at this and you have no idea what you're looking at, highly, highly recommend you take the impact point matrix training. It's completely free and it will explain this ecosystem on a bird's eye level, which is very helpful. I, um, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to guys and the ones who get what I'm saying the quickest and get the quickest results are the ones that have watched this training, understand this training. A lot of these guys have watched it more than once, really getting it to sink in. I even have guys that draw it out. I mean, it really get it into their uh, subconscious. And it helps a lot. When it, if you just understand the ecosystem part of it, you'll stop chasing magic pills and magic bullets. And that alone is worth it because that will save you so much time. So you can start focusing on the things that really make a difference. OK, rather than chasing magic pills, which just which is just frustrating. Right. And just wastes a lot of time. All right. So you don't have to watch that right now. But I do recommend you go back and watch that training because it, it will make all of this make so much more sense. OK, but you're good just for this training. I mean, we haven't watched it because we're going to dive once again, like I said, into this neuromuscular portion. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can. Yeah. So this is the body mind connection this whole center portion, and today the neuromuscular part of this. So I think what I'm going to start with in terms of that is the prostate, okay? Because it's really important. All guys need to pay attention to their prostate. It's a very important part of your sexual functioning. Um, actually, let's go into a slide so we can see it a little better. So here would be the prostate gland, and you could see how it's sandwiched right in between the bladder and uh, the penis. Right? And this is very important when it comes to your ejaculations. Um, and also, this is, you know, if this is one of the most important parts of the body uh, that us as men really need to pay attention to. Because if you're not taking good care of your prostate, you know, pretty much all men are going to have problems with it if they don't keep it under check. Uh, the older you get and the more abuse you put on your body, the more the prostate gland tends to suffer. Uh, particularly if you're on something like TRT, um, it enlarges the prostate. So you've got to really play close attention to this. This is why TRT is um, contraindicated if you have prostate cancer because it will enlarge the prostate. And once your prostate's enlarged, uh, it creates all kinds of problems. One of the easiest to notice is um, either having difficulty in urinating or feeling you got, like you got to urinate a lot, like getting up to urinate at night. Okay, That's, the prostate gland plays a big part of that. Um, and what makes it interesting um, and why it's relevant to the neuromuscular portion of the body-mind connection is because it's both a gland and a muscle. It's very unique in that sense. So, um, you know, it has its glandular functions in terms of, you know, uh, semen, but also it is responsible for ejecting that semen out and making contractions. So there's a muscular part of this. And just like any kind of muscle, um, if it gets tight and it has difficulty doing that, you can 
run into problems, run into ejaculatory problems, run into erection problems, uh, like I just mentioned, urinary problems. So it's a very important part of the male anatomy, and it's a very unique part in the sense it's both a gland and a muscle. Okay, so one of the things when it comes in terms of um, keeping this thing supple and keeping it, um, you know, functioning the way we want um, is massage, uh, prostate massage. So this is contraindicated if you already have been diagnosed with prostate cancer, by the way, because you're going to be increasing blood flow and that can um, cause the cancer to spread if you already have it, you know, metastasis of the um, cancer. So we want to be really careful about that if you've been diagnosed. If not, and you're just having a problem with it, or you want to just help prevent problems from coming or making them less likely, massaging the prostate can be really helpful. Now, this is a difficult thing to do on your own. You can do it on your own, but it does involve you going into your rectum. All right, inside of your rectum and massaging inside. So you're going to want to use gloves if you do it. And there's a variety of uh, videos on like YouTube you could look at uh, in terms of doing this on your own. It's kind of difficult to do. And it's, of course, it's messy. So it's not something um, I typically do. Um, you can go get it professionally done, which is better, of course, someone who really is no knows what they're doing. Um, another thing you can do is get some massagers. Uh, uh, for instance, like the Aneros. The Aneros is a really nice device. You actually insert it into your rectum and you massage the prostate um, by, you know, squeezing the PC muscles back and forth, okay, and holding it for a variety of uh, counts and just getting a massage. So it's, it, there's no electrical part of it. And it's easy to put in, say, if you're having sex, you can just keep it inside of you. Or if you're just practicing like what we do in Rock Hard for Life, power masturbation, um, you can have the Aneros in there and have it massaging you while you're doing it. Plus, it's very pleasurable. There are some guys that can actually trigger orgasms just by stimulating the prostate gland because it's the same tissue um, that becomes the G-spot in the female. Right. So if you were becoming a female, this would be the same uh, tissue, same embryonic tissue. Well, you can actually in that being the case, it can be very pleasurable for men uh, to stimulate this. Like I said, some guys can actually stimulate their own orgasms and have really intense orgasms through the prostate gland. So there's another uh, plus to the prostate massage. Uh, in addition to the Aneros, there's other devices you can buy, like electric devices. I like the Soft Sonic, which is really nice. Um, you can put that inside your rectum, and then um, it actually has vibrations. At, but with this one, you're actually having to move your hand and stuff to get the massage in. That's, that's a different type of massager, but it's another option in terms of, you know, getting more blood flow into the prostate, making sure, because anytime you can get more blood flow in and, and uh, keep that going, it's going to be healthier tissue, right? Fresh blood always coming in, keeps the tissue healthier, which will keep the prostate healthier, okay? So that's a really good thing to uh, invest in is some prostate massage. Now, another thing is uh, I mentioned before, when this enlarges, usually what you'll notice is a difficulty in urinating, either starting your stream or, or having a strong stream or getting up at night uh, to urinate. Now, one thing you can do to sort of see if that is your issue, particularly if you're getting up at night, and that's really important because that, that's one of the things I address right off the bat when I'm working with clients, is sleep because most of your testosterone and your morning wood, of course, all happens during sleep. So if you're not getting good quality sleep, um, then you are, you know, not going to get the same kind of testosterone production and you not going to have the same kind of morning wood. And when you're waking up at night to go pee, the issue with that is say you wake up in the middle of an REM cycle 
well, then you don't go right back into REM. You have to go back down into deep and then back up into REM again. So you're going to miss some of that REM sleep that you would have gotten if you didn't have to get up to pee. And once again, just to remind you, REM is where most of your testosterone is produced and also where warning wood occurs. So we want to try to get as solid sleep as possible, right? Restful. Ideally, your head hits the pillow. You go to sleep very quickly. And the next thing you know, you're waking up in the morning and you're feeling really refreshed. That is going to be great for your bedroom performance. So if you are waking up to pee, what you can do is um, assuming you, know, you got to look at your blood pressure. Okay, If you got high blood pressure, you might not want to use the strategy. But one thing what sodium will do, and I'm talking about like high quality sea salt, like Redmond's real salt or Himalayan pink salt, something that has lots of trace minerals, not just sodium and chloride. If you get that in your system, that will uh, add it to your water, right? It'll help you absorb the water better, which is less likely that you're going to pee it out because your body's absorbing it better. But also that sodium helps your body create something called ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And that hormone is what suppresses the urge to pee. So not making, your, not making it so salty that it tastes like salt water, but just adding some salt into it so that it absorbs better in your body and it, your body produces more of this ADH. And um, that might help you sleep through the night if that's your issue. If it's not affecting that and you're still having to get up to pee, you really might want to go get your prostate checked out. OK, uh, all men should be having their prostates checked out, especially when they're over the age of 50. And um, because, you know, serious problems like prostate cancer, it, prostate cancer is almost on par with breast cancer. It's that prevalent. So you want to stay on top of that. Typically, you would get what's called a PSA test, which would help measure to see if there's any problems going on with the prostate. OK, so that's a little helpful thing there. Um, i tell you what, I think next what we're going to move on to, actually, let's look at this first. Um, this is another um, picture of the prostate. And what we're seeing here, so here's the bladder, here's the urethra. So this comes all the way down through the prostate into your penis. That's what you pee out of, the urethra. And if you look, though, as it comes into the prostate, um, one of the things it goes through, actually, this is not a great picture. Let me go to this one first. And if you look, you know, this urethra coming through here, if this prostate's enlarged, you see how it constricts it? And once again, that can make it very difficult um, to start urination, keep urination going. And also, since it can't come out as much, it builds up pressure. And that's what builds up that urge to pee, feeling like you need to pee. Um, so that just sort of illustrates what I was talking about. Now, let's go to this one, and um, what I want you to pay attention to here is this is the pelvic floor muscles right here. And you see how uh, the urethra coming out of the bladder goes through the prostate, through the pelvic floor muscles, into the penis, and that's where you urinate. So the reason this is important is um, particularly if you have had prostate issues, so you've had prostate cancer and you've gone through treatment like uh, chemo or surgery or radiation, sometimes what can happen through those treatments is you will develop incontinence, okay, to where this system up here is not working so well. And you, when you feel like you need to pee, you got to go immediately. So one of the things they'll teach you, and part of what we're talking about today are these pelvic floor muscles is getting these pelvic floor muscles toned enough to where um, it can compensate for what you lose in the prostate in terms of being able to hold that urine in. Okay, so it's like a, it's like almost a, a backup system where the pelvic floors can be used almost as a backup system to help with your incontinence. So that's important to keep in mind too, is uh, when you strengthen the pelvic floor, you also uh, improve your ability to, uh, you know, stop yourself from the need to uh, urinate right there <laughs> if you're having incontinent problems. All right. Okay. Oops. Didn't mean to skip ahead there. Now, um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about here is um, the 
connection between the brain and the pelvic floor. And so first of all, let's look at the pelvic floor a little bit uh, in more detail. Because um, what we looked at here is like a cross section, right? This is like a cross section that we're talking about. Here, we're kind of looking what it would look like if we looked at the whole um, pelvic floor uh, as, a, you know, just cutting away the skin. And you can see here um, these muscles, how they're intimately tied in here with the penis itself. In fact, this um, uh, bulbospongiosis here, this one's really important in terms of helping to maintain erections. Um, it almost reminds me of the skin that you see on a rhino's horn, right? So if you look at a rhino, you've got the skin that comes out and then the, and then the, um, actual uh, tusk or, you know, horn comes out of that skin. And that skin there provides a, a base for it to operate on. So when you have this muscle here um, strengthened, it helps a similar function. It like gives a, a stronger base for the erection to work off of, okay, which helps to maintain it. Now, one of the issues, though, is um, I will have guys that come to me that have just done too much of this, right? And that's what I'm talking about control is their work. They focus way more on strengthening, okay? And here's the problem with that. When, you st when you're focused so much on strengthening, it builds up what's called muscle tone. So if you look at bodybuilders, I mean... I'm not talking about guys who just go work out. I'm talking like serious bodybuilders who are like in the gym all the time. If you look at them, you know, they're, they're really well built, but it looks like their muscles never really turn off. You know, they're just constantly contracted. That's muscle tone. It's like it, it, it there's a, it's like always activated. That muscle tone is high. Okay. Versus a low muscle tone. It's a high muscle tone. And the problem with this is like, if you're overdoing like Kegels is what, most guys use for um, pelvic floor. Um, we use a different system of doing that that works much more on control versus strength. Because when you're focused on just the strength, once again, you're going to build up this tone. And the problem with that is, is these muscles, they don't just support the erection. They're also very important when it comes to ejaculation. And when you're getting close to the point of no return, so the point of no return, you hit the point of no return and you're going to ejaculate. Okay, that's the point of no return. When you get close to that point of no return, these PC muscles start to tense up naturally. Okay, so and that's one of the things that cues the body. Okay, it's time to ejaculate. Okay, but if you're going into the bedroom and these things are already tight, OK, because of all the Kegels you've been doing, then you're that much closer to ejaculation. You're that much closer to the point of no return. So that's how it can work against you when you're focusing on strength versus control. Really, what you want to do is get control between the brain and the uh, pelvic floor to where you've got so much control over it. it it's uh, like unconscious. It goes on an unconscious level. And then when you get close to the point in a return, your body knows how to relax these muscles when what you're wanting to do is last longer, okay, versus ejaculate faster than you want to. Okay, that's much more about control than it is about strengthening. Okay. But strength does play a role here in terms of maintaining erections. And you can you can see that in this particular muscle. Now let's move into, you know, how this all works on, you know, the brain controlling these things. And that's something called the neuromuscular junction. So basically what happens is, you know, muscles are basically stupid. And what I mean by that is they won't do anything unless the nervous system tells them to do something. Okay. So the nervous system plays a huge role in this. Okay, so when you're just focused on the muscles and you're not focused on control of the muscles through uh, the nervous system, you're not um, focused, you're not looking, you're not doing the whole picture here. Because once again, this doesn't do anything without this signal. Okay, and that, that's primarily how it happens through this neuromuscular junction, they call it. 
Uh, let's see, I think this is a little bit more detailed view. Uh, in this view here kind of shows as well, here's the neuromuscular junction. Um, but this also shows how the contraction works, okay, through actin and myosin. So when a muscle contracts, it, it gets the signal and the actin and myosin come together like this, okay? And that's what shortens the muscle, all right? And also the release, okay? And how much control you have over the release. That's something we focus on a lot too because you, it's harder to do a release than it is a shortening contraction, a lengthening contraction. So it gives you much better control when you learn how to do that. Uh, and that's this, these are the basic two uh, proteins in which that happens, actin and myosin. Okay. And then this one here, the reason this one's important is it really shows, you know, because most, you'll see this more here in a second, but most of the nerves in fact, oh yeah, I say most because you'll see an exception in a second. Most of the nerves that control the pelvic floor and the penis, right, come out of the lower back in the sacrum. And you can, this is just kind of showing those nerves. And that's showing too how they innervate these muscles and also how if these muscles are tight, how they can constrict on these nerves, right? That's another reason you don't want tight muscles in your pelvic floor. Okay, because they can actually impinge these nerves, which makes it more difficult uh, to function in the bedroom. All right, so let's see. Let's. This is just a little bit, oop, a little bit better picture of the actual muscles themselves. Okay, once again, the bulbospongiosis. You can see that on this one much better. How this all works. How this is all tied into the rectum. Right. So, I mean, if you've ever done traditional Kegels, you've probably felt your butt tighten up like that because all this stuff is connected. But the more you learn control, the more you can isolate these various things. Once again, like I said, it's much more about control than strength, uh, especially when it comes to lasting power. All right. This is just another uh, picture of the neurologic um, uh, connection. And let me see here. Yeah, let's look at this. So I want to bring this up here because this is a picture of the core uh, of the body. You, 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 talk, you hear people talking about, oh, you got to strengthen your core. you got to strengthen your core. But this is the main portion of the core. And what I want you to see here, first of all, let's look at the, what most people understand as the core. They definitely understand that the back and the abdo abdomen is part of the core. And what this is showing here are the deepest of those muscles. So you have several layers. It's not just your six pack. You know, you've got the obliques and um, you've also got the transverse abdominus. And you'll see the transversus abdominus is the deepest of the abdominal muscles. And it the muscle fibers run opposite of where the six pack runs. Right? So the six pack, it goes up and down the muscle fibers. Here it goes across like a belt, like a belt around your body, but it's like a huge belt. Okay. And so that's part of the reason why it's such an essential part of the core is it really locks in uh, the abdomen, which is the most vulnerable part of our body. That's why um, animals will not tend to show their belly, you know, expose their belly unless they feel really comfortable around someone because that's your most vulnerable part. The multifidus is the deepest of the back muscles, okay? And these two, there's been multiple studies showing how these two work together in conjunction in terms of providing a really strong core, the multifidus and the transversus abdominis, the deepest of the back muscles and the deepest of the abdominal muscles. But also, look here, the diaphragm and the floor, uh, the, uh, the muscles of the pelvic floor, okay? And you see how they mirror each other and create almost like a, a cage, you know, that um, supports all of this. These two are really essential when it comes to your bedroom performance. Um, and let's start with the diaphragm here. So let's look at this picture. So this picture here is showing the arterial flow that's going on through the body, primarily 
coming out of the abdomen and into the pelvic floor and into the penis. But let me, let me see if I can. Yeah, we'll go one in. If you look here, so the heart is up in here, okay? And it's supplying blood to the rest of the body. But how does it do that? It goes through the diaphragm, okay? So if the diaphragm is constricted um, by any means and it constricts on that blood flow, it clamps down on that blood flow, it's going to affect the rate of blood flow to the entire lower half of the body, okay? Including your penis. So this is a really important part to open up. And uh, especially today, um, you know, bad posture has been a thing for a while. But, you know, in most bad posture, what we're talking about, you know, sitting, slumping over, you know, this type of thing, slumping. Well, when that happens, it constricts this whole, you know, rib cage. This whole rib cage comes forward and um, compresses down on the diaphragm as well as on the abdomen. And you've got all this fascial tissue in there which we're going to talk about here in a second, but that fat, this connective tissue, when it stays in a shortened position for a while, it sticks to itself. So you become like stiff, you know, it's like, ah, you know, it, it, and that greatly decreases blood flow. Well, today it's even worse. You know, we've had prolonged sitting for a while, which has definitely affected our erections in a bad way. But today it's even worse over the past decade, at least where, you know, now the cell phones are everywhere. We're just bent over all the time. Well, not all the time, but a lot more than we used to be, right? Our heads bent down, our shoulders are bent forward, and we're looking at this little screen and, you know, typing on our screen. And once again, holding that flexed posture and how much it affects our core and our blood flow that gets in. Okay, really important concept to understand. And so... I was talking to um, my diamond group this morning. We had a great call this morning. We were talking about um, posture and just how important that is. Uh, that's a big reason why. Blood flow, huge reason. Um, let's come this, take this down a little bit further. So if you look here, these muscles here, this is what's called the psoas, and this is the iliacus. Um, a lot of times people just combine it and they'll call it the iliopsoas. This is the main hip flexors we have in our body. And they're deep. They're deep into the pelvis. They're deep into the spine. And all these blood vessels run around it. Okay, so if you have tightness in this area, especially prolonged sitting, right? So think about this uh, hip being up because that's what's happening when you sit. So that means that, that this muscle here is shortened and held shortened for a long period of time. That can not only get tight, but clamp down on this blood flow that should be getting to your pelvis and your penis, right? Less blood flow. As soon as you sit down, your blood starts to slow. And the longer you sit, the more of a problem this becomes. So let's look at this a little bit deeper. So once again, here's that psoas muscle I'm talking about. And you can see how the blood flow comes all around it. And you can just imagine if this thing's tight, okay, it is restricting blood flow. And this is the main, this is the main split right here that goes into your penis. So if it if it's clamping down on that, you're going to have compromised blood flow uh, to the penis, okay, which is really important. And now let's look at the fascia, so the, the um, connective tissue that covers all that. Super important because this is what gets tight first, okay? Not the muscles. First, the fascia will get tight because it's, um, it's meant to be elastic. And when you're sitting, for, for instance, we're going to use sitting because lots of people sit for long periods of time. And they tend to have erectile dysfunction. Like, for instance, I work with a lot of truck drivers. And part of the reason for that is they sit so long during the day. That's part of the reason. It's also, it's hard to eat well out on the road and the sleep schedule gets messed up. I mean, there's other issues, but the prolonged sitting is a huge issue here. This fascial system starts to get really tight and clamping on itself. And once again, all of that blood flow is going through there, right? It's going through all of this connective tissue. So if the connective tissue is tight, clamps down on the blood flow and it's going to compromise the amount of blood getting to your pelvis and thus into your penis. 
Okay, so you're starting to see how this is all connected and why it's important to understand, you know, this full aspect of the core, including the diaphragm and these pelvic floor muscles, which is what we're primarily talking about today. All right, let me see if I missed anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go into this next. All right, so what this is showing here is how the sacral nerves, okay, the nerves that are coming out of the sacrum, I'll show you some other pictures here in a second, but out of your tailbone, okay, coming in, this is what primarily uh, innervates the penis and the testicles. So this is real important. Your tailbone is real important, okay? Um, if there's any constrictions in there, did you ever have a injury where you um, fractured your tailbone? you know, knocked your tailbone out of place. Okay, that's some place to really look at and think about if you're having erectile issues. There may be something going on in the sacral area. Uh, let's blow this up a little bit. And this one's just kind of showing, uh, it's breaking down the roots or where these are coming from. You have like S1, S2, S3, S4. So they're primarily coming out of S2, S4, innervating the penis through the dorsal nerve. Um, the perennial nerve going to the perineum, right? The, the area right bef between your anus and your scrotum, and then also innervating scrotum. Uh, hold on. Okay, here's another image that um, expands it out a little bit. So what we can see here is, um, this is talking mainly about ejaculation. Um, if we're looking here, most of what's innervating the penis, once again, coming out of the sacrum, S1 through S4, uh, and then ejaculation is primarily coming here through the prostate gland, which we talked about first, primarily coming out of the lower thoracic to upper lumbar. So this has got T10 to, to L2. So you can see how the lower half of your body, uh, the lumbar and the sacral system is super important when it comes to your erections and your ejaculation. So thinking about, you know, did you have any low back injuries or uh, sacral injuries? Okay, that can all play into it and also can leave residuals like in your fascial system that you never addressed. You know, maybe you've got some bunched up fascia that happened from that injury that you never got treated. Okay, that can also be playing into this. Um, and this is just a, a more advanced picture of it, but it's just breaking it up even more. You can see where these nerves are coming from, okay? Lower thoracic, upper lumbar, uh, and then as well as the sacral. This one's a little bit better in terms that you can actually see, okay? This is the tailbone. It's coming off of here and innervating the penis. And then the actual ejaculatory systems coming up from the upper lumbar, lower thoracic. All right, and yeah, this one shows that this is a much better picture of the sacral nerves that I'm talking about. So this is these nerves are actually coming off of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is inside of the spine here, and it comes down and uh, branches off and actually comes out of each one of these holes of the sacrum, right? That's what they mean by S1, that's sacral uh, one, sacral two, sacral three. And once again, these are the ones that primarily are innervating your penis. So if you're having issues, you, uh, you, one of the things you, uh, you want to look at is your tailbone. You know, did you ever have any injuries? Is there an issue with your tailbone? Can you mobilize your tailbone a little bit like through um, uh, foam rolling? You know, I had that class on foam rolling. That can help a lot with that. Okay, now this is important because uh, this gets overlooked a lot. Okay, and this is, uh, this is a really good diagram showing this. What I was just talking about here, these pelvic nerves, okay, coming out of the sacrum. Okay, those come in and once again, innervate the penis, just like we were talking about before. But look at this. See, this is all connected. There's this junction right here that connects to all this. And where does this come from? This is the vagus nerve. Okay, and I've talked about this. Uh, multiple times in other classes. So vague, the vagus nerve uh, innervates your vocal cords, your heart, your lungs, big into your gut. But then from your gut, 
it innervates, it makes, it forms a plexus that innervates with these pelvic nerves. So in other words, the vagus nerve and the pelvic nerves come together and that's what innervates the penis. So it's not just those sacral nerves. It's also that vagus nerve that's way up in your brainstem. Okay. And that's important. Like I said, we talk about the vagus nerve quite a bit and how to use this. This is another um, picture of the vagus nerve. You can see how it's coming out of the brainstem and then comes down and innervates the uh, vocal cords and then uh, the heart, the lungs, and then in here. Now, this just isn't showing where it interfaces with the, the, the penis because there's a plexus that innervates right here and then those two connect. That's how the vagus nerve connects. And the vagus nerve is really important because that's what that's one of the primary things we have control over that can put us into the parasympathetic nervous system. This is where we want to be. This is the rest and reproduce nervous system. This sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight nervous system. This is when we're nervous or we're scared um, or we're in danger. Like we're, when we go, and it has to be, it has to be real. Like when we go into the bedroom and we're all erection focused and we're afraid, am I going to get an erection? Am I going to ejaculate too soon? We're worried. We're nervous. That puts us into the fight or flight nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system. Okay. Which is not where you want to be in terms of your erections. Because one thing you'll see not only is an erection killer, but if you end up do getting an erection, you see what it does. It promotes ejaculation. So even if you do get an erection, if you're worried and you're nervous and you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, the chances are you're going to ejaculate much quicker than, than you want, okay? Because that's just how that nervous system works. What you want to do is be in the parasympathetic, see, promotion of, of genitals, erection of genitals, right? So either the penis or the clitoris and also helping to maintain all that, okay? That's why... Um, up here and the sexual keys that's why relaxation is so 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 important is it keeps you in that parasympathetic nervous system which is where you know erections are promoted and the one of the main ways to get into there is through the vagus nerve right and there's a lots of different things you can do but real quick this is one of my favorites is um the primal deep breathing yeah i find this gets you into the uh, parasympathetic nervous system very, very quickly. And it's a easy technique to use uh, before you go into the bedroom. Okay. Um, and it's simply, all you're doing is taking a deep breath into your belly through your nose, which produces more nitric oxide when, it, when you breathe through your nose, taking a deep breath that takes at least four seconds. So a pretty slow, deep breath. And then you're exhaling longer than your inhale. So as long as it's longer, say you inhale four seconds, you exhale five seconds or even longer and you hum on the exhale. That really is powerful in activating the vagus nerve because the slow breathing activates the vagus nerve and the humming deeply activates the vagus nerve. So when you combine those two together, super simple. And this is also the case when you do like ohm meditations, right? Very, very effective at this. But we'll just do one real quick. So once you do one with me, you're going to breathe in through the nose, deep into the belly, and then exhale with a hum. Okay? So this is, let's do it together. So let's do an inhale. See, the home also makes it much easier to extend the exhale. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling significantly more relaxed just with one breath. Imagine doing that for one to three minutes, right, before you go in the bedroom or before your date arrives. Really helps a lot. Okay? But once again, not just in before, I've, I've, I've talked about how important the vagus nerve is in general, but now you understand that it's also really important in this sense. Is it literally interfaces with the pelvic nerves to innervate the penis itself. Okay. So really powerful in terms of your erections.
Okay, I'm just seeing if I'm missing anything. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about blood flow to the same area real quick. Um, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, you know, erections, they got to have blood flow. Got to have good blood flow. Okay, it's an essential. You got to have it. It's not sufficient. You got to have more than just blood flow. But you got to have the right biochemicals and all that other stuff. But this is really important. So any kind of constriction on this will, like we talked about the fascial system, constricting on this will make a, uh, an, uh, a problem. But also neurologically, we were just talking about the vagus nerve. You know, these, let's go back to the, oops, go back to this motor unit real quick. See if I can find it. Here we go. Motor neuron, okay, neuromuscular junction. Once again, just to remind you, nothing happens, right? The muscle doesn't do anything unless the nervous system tells it to. So if you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, you're relaxed, right? Your vagus nerve is activated, you're, you're relaxed. Um, then, you know, what's going to happen is the muscles, these muscles are going to relax, okay? They're going to relax, and that's going to help the erection, going to help the blood flow go into the erection. It's going to help it so that um, you're not going to have as much constrictions on any blood flow that's coming through here. And that's just the skeletal muscle. There's also innervation into the muscle of the uh, vessel itself, Right. So I hope that's clear. So the skeletal muscle, like, for instance, we use the iliopsoas here a second ago, you know, this particular big muscle, it's innervated. So if it's in the parasympathetic nervous system, so it can relax. OK, then blood flow, any kind of constriction on this blood flow, it's going to help it. It's going to help relieve some of that constriction. OK, you might have to do more like some myofascial release to really take care of all of it. But even just simple relaxation is going to help because it's going to, once again, cause these muscles to relax. So, but each vessel has its own muscles, okay? Not, not just the skeletal muscles, but what's called smooth muscle. And that's what allows the, um, the vessel itself to constrict or open up, okay? So this is actually showing the smooth muscle fibers that are inside of each one of these vessels. And uh, so when it gets a signal, you know, from the parasympathetic nervous system, it relaxes. It allows these to spread out. When it uh, gets signals from the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, okay, it constricts. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's, <laughs> that's part of the issue there. That's, that's another reason that this neuromuscular concept is so important is it actually applies to blood flow itself in the vessels because that's how vessels open and close through smooth muscle and once again muscles don't do anything unless the nervous system tells it to okay that's why it's so important to be able to get one of the reasons many reasons to be able to get into that parasympathetic nervous system and the vagus nerve is one of the more powerful ways to do it especially under conscious control all right, let's look at some of these other pictures. This is, this is really important, too, because if we look at this, what this is showing, let's see if I can put this into context for you. Mm, I don't think I have an actual blood vessel slide. But this is, if we look at, um, if you picture a blood vessel, okay, the very inside of that blood vessel is coated with what's called endothelial cells. Okay, and that's where nitric oxide is produced. So very important. Nitric oxide is released from the endothelial cell, which causes the blood vessel to open up even more. So more blood flow comes through. Okay, right on the other side of that endothelial cell is the smooth muscle I'm talking about. This is what either relaxes to open up or contracts to constrict the muscle. Okay, so what's important here, what's interesting here, is I've talked about the past how those endothelial cells are so important because they release nitric oxide. But what also releases nitric oxide is the cavernous nerve that goes um, into the, the chambers of the penis itself. So that nerve, okay, will uh, release nitric oxide. Okay, so that's another way. And once again, if these nerves are constricted through like fascial constrictions or so, they're not going to function as well as they would otherwise. 
Okay, so it's really important that we not only have really healthy endothelial cells, but that these cavernous nerves are working the way they should so that we can, we have nitric oxide from any direction that we need in order to, to get and sustain those erections. And let's see, this is just one more picture that is sort of illustrating the same thing. So you can see here's the endothelial cell producing nitric oxide primarily through the um, uh, amino acid L-arginine, uh, turns into nitric oxide, uh, which relaxes the uh, smooth muscle cell, goes in, creates CGMP. But here is the cavernous nerve and how it releases nitric oxide directly and then causes the relaxation of the smooth muscle. Once again, a very important part of the neuromuscular system. So I hope you can see now just how prevalent and how important this neuromuscular system is. And that's why it's one of the main things, one of those four main keys right inside of the body-mind connection, okay? And once again, what's more important is learning how to control these muscles, having fine control over them versus just brute strength. Because brute strength won't do anything for your lasting power. In fact, it can make your lasting power a lot worse because now you're chronically tight. Okay. So you want strength, but not at the expense of control and flexibility. That's, um, that would be like going to the gym and only working on strengthening and never stretching out, which really starts to constrict your blood flow, right? Because now you're so tight. Okay. You want the strengthening, but you want the flexibility too and you want the control, okay? And that's what's way more important, and that's what plays into this sexual power, okay? When you, ha when you have true control over this, then you have much more sexual power, and that power is not just brute force, that's lasting power as well, right? Having that ability to do that. Um, this neuromuscular part of this is one of the most important parts when it comes to lasting power, lasting as long as you want. This is one of the most important parts, at least from a physical perspective here on the impact point matrix. Okay. All right. So I know that was a lot, but this is something that I haven't gone real deep into in the past. And I've had a, a number of questions and, um, you know, I, uh, I thought I'd just address them in this uh, particular workshop showing how it pretty much all works together, how the nervous system and the muscular system, um, both skeletal and smooth muscle are critical factors when it comes to getting, maintaining erections and lasting as long as you want in the bedroom. All right. Let's see here. Dang. I don't know what's going on with uh, StreamYard, but unfortunately, my comments aren't coming through. But um, that's the most important thing. The only thing I would say here is, uh, once again, if you're just now starting uh, and this is, seems overwhelming to you, um, there's I, two different things I would do. I would join the free group. There's a uh, link right there where you can ask more questions. And there's a ton of trainings in there, free trainings you can go to. And it, especially if you have an idea, like you've watched this IPM, I'll put that up to you. You've watched this IPM training and you have a pretty good idea of this ecosystem. And you have a pretty good idea of where your issues might be coming from. Then you can kind of directly go to these trainings in the free group. If you're a little bit more confused about that and I was like, I don't even know where to start. Then what I would do is hop on a call with my team. And what they can do is at least at the very least, Find out what's going on with you specifically and say, okay, go look at these trainings. Okay, Th this would be more specific to you so that you're at least starting off uh, on what's most important and not feeling overwhelmed. All right. Um, great um, talking to you guys today. It's been, I've been off for a number of weeks. It's really good to be back. And I'm going to come in next time and we're going to finish up the center portion of the body mind connection and talk about the genitals, which uh, you were going to save the, the best for last. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, go be a beast. <laughs>